Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Well, it seems like AOC's honeymoon period is over. It seems like her progressive, revolutionary image, her very carefully curated image, you know, she positioned herself as the leader of the new progressive leftist arm of the Democrat Party. She was there to shake things up, to bring an anti-establishment counterbalance to Washington. And she talked a big game, of course, the first couple of years. Well, fast forward to now, AOC is indistinguishable from any other corporate Democrat. I mean, it's the same thing. Here, I'll make a meme for it, and I guess that'll be the meme of the day for this video. Nancy Pelosi, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It's the same picture. It's the same thing. Well, obviously, that's not what a lot of people voted for, right? Especially the more honest, staunch progressives. You know, the ones who actually believe their ridiculous leftist ideas? Yeah, obviously, they were sold a false bill of goods. And it seems like the phenomenon of buyer's remorse is starting to bubble to the surface. In fact, we might even be a little bit further than that. I think we might be reaching a boiling point here. Because Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's constituents are starting to get pretty pissed with her. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. All-out chaos erupted at the most recent AOC public event. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so AOC recently did an event. I'm not exactly sure when this happened, but I think it was recent. I think it was actually in early September, but of course I could be wrong on the date. Anyways, doesn't matter. Point is, she did an event, and like usual, it devolved into complete chaos and protest. Take a look. None of it! You know that! This is the only thing that matters right now. We could be in a nuclear war at any minute and you continue to fund it. That's what's going on. Why not right now? You're the liar here. Nobody has hold you accountable. That's what's happening. And it is time for you to stand up and realize that what you've been saying has been lies. Let your conscience come through for once. Yeah, it seems like the far leftists are finally waking up to the reality of these scam candidates. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez doesn't represent the little guy. AOC is a bought and paid for political puppet. Let's not forget that she was selected as a candidate after she auditioned for the role. She's not a real grassroots politician. She's simply marketed in that way. And then the moment she gets to office, well, she pretty much changed instantly. Voting for every single big war military industrial complex bill. The blank check to Ukraine. Glenn Greenwald on Fox News the other day spoke about this. Well, she voted for the war in Ukraine, of course. She was, along with every single other Democrat and Bernie Sanders, they were unified in voting for Joe Biden's policy. The only no votes back in May of last year when $40 billion was authorized came from the right wing populist wing, the anti-establishment wing of the Republican Party. There were literally zero no votes. And AOC started calling people pro-Russian who questioned her at town halls about why are you sending all our money overseas to the Pentagon, to the CIA, to wars when you were supposed to fight for things like Medicare for all, which we still don't have, or a minimum wage or anything like that. And she would invoke the same rhetoric as neocons because that's whose side she's on. And all you have to do is look at how the media treats her. They adore her because she's oh. a harmless threat to nobody. They both hit the nail right on the head. You know, supposedly AOC is representing the far left progressive base that wants to pull funding away from the military industrial complex and reinvest that money into social programs for people who need it. That's obviously one of their favorite talking points. And you know, she loves to play into that thing when she does her little Instagram live videos. So let me start off this whole UAP discussion by just stating the obvious, which is that people don't trust the government. And why would you? I mean, a lot of our budget is like five defense contractors in a trench coat asking for a trillion dollars. So, you know, when you don't have universal health care, but you spend $800 billion a year that can't pass a, you know, an audit, I don't trust it either. That's why I sit on the oversight committee. 
People don't trust our government. Why would you? A lot of our budget is five defense contractors in a trench coat asking for a trillion dollars. She presents it as if it's this bad thing that she's against, then literally votes for it at every single point. And she doesn't even have to. That's the crazy part. Like a lot of the time, she could vote no, or she could vote present, or she could just not show up to vote to signal her solidarity with the woke progressive base that supports her, challenging the corporate Democrat status quo, but she doesn't. She literally votes for all of these bills. It's completely insane. Far lefties are done with her. Here's a clip that I found from September 6, 2023, from a YouTube channel named Revolutionary Blackout, where he voices his disappointment with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez essentially just becoming, yet again, another Washington politician. AOC is doing a corporate PR tour in order to explain to people why she sold out and became an ordinary pro war Democrat. In this interview with The Guardian, she explains why progressives must align themselves behind Jim Crow Joe in order to defeat the threat of fascism. So once again, workers must give up the negotiation power because this is the most important election of our lifetime. AOC claims that we must protect the democracy of Ukraine. You mean the same democracy that literally bans socialist parties while leaving far right parties intact? What kind of Socialists want to protect Ukrainian democracy when Ukraine banned workers from their ability to collectively bargain. I have zero f patience for these democratic socialists who are constantly repeating CIA talking points. AOC is our enemy. And so obviously you can sense the mounting frustration. You know, I hope people start to catch on. This is why you should always be wary of any candidate or any politician promoted by the mainstream establishment, or rather the mainstream media. This is what you get, not only on the Democrat side, but on the Republican side as well. You know, it's the litmus test. If the mainstream media is promoting that candidate, run away as far as humanly possible. That should have been the first red flag with AOC. She was a media darling. If you're anti-establishment, and if you're anti-status quo, if you're challenging the establishment, the media is going to do everything in its power to destroy you, not promote you. People need to catch on. I mean, it's so incredibly obvious. Joe Biden's entire campaign platform, most of the key points, was nothing but lies. They say one thing, trying to get elected, and then they do another and represent a completely different class of people the moment they're in that position of power. AOC is no different. Somebody who really cares about the little guy probably wouldn't be schmoozing with the elites at the Met Gala to begin with, let alone wearing a $30,000 dress. Somebody who cares about the little guy probably wouldn't be downplaying inflation. Struggling mother of four slams AOC for tone deaf take on inflation. How can she be so oblivious? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez shared a tone-deaf video on inflation calling it corporate propaganda to hide greedy shareholders. This is such a stupid, stupid talking point. Then, of course, that quote or that talking point was taken to the streets in New York City and Bronx in AOC's own district. And the headline here says it all, pretty much. AOC's constituents slam her claim that inflation is propaganda. Quote, is she crazy? Yeah, maybe a little bit. The deadly combination. A little crazy, a little dumb, and a corrupt establishment puppet, pretty much one of the worst combinations you could possibly imagine for an elective representative because you know that the people behind her are of an even more deadly recipe. The ones pulling the strings, the ones controlling, aren't dumb and incompetent. They're highly intelligent, corrupt, and evil. And that right there is the problem. Folks, it's the simple litmus test. If you're analyzing a politician and the media doesn't hate them, if they aren't running non-stop hit pieces trying to destroy that personal's reputation in their campaign, then let's call it probably 9 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 times that person is an establishment plant. A puppet. Controlled by the puppet masters. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.